How's it going, guys? Bluebird Gamer here. Welcome back. We're, I'm on my solo survivor world today, and the reason I'm here is because I wanted to show you something that I made in Minecraft to solve a problem that I had. Now, this problem I am referring to is it takes a long time to refill all my buckets because for those of you who know me, I make tons of buckets in Minecraft because they're very useful. But having to refill them is such a pain in the butt because you have to manually click on every bucket. They stack weird in your inventory because your inventory oftentimes is full of useful things. I use a bunch of shulker boxes, so mine's really neat and clean. But normally, it's really full and packed and it's just a pain in the butt. So I have built an automatic bucket filler. Woo! Now, you may think, oh, there's t Bluebeard, there's tons of designs out on the internet, on YouTube, etc., etc., for an automatic bucket filler. And I will say you're absolutely right. But I had a unique situation. A lot of the ones that I have seen are four tall, five tall, etc., etc. They don't, they're not the sizes that I need, because I wanted to slot it into my abandoned mineshaft base that I have here. This is just a hollowed out abandoned mineshaft, made to look nice, of course. But I had a three large gap. So I thought, I want to make a design for an automatic bucket filler that works and is only three tall. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. So let's jump over to my test world and I will show you how it works and how to build it. As you can see, it fits into a 5x5x3 five by five by area, which makes it great for slotting in areas with low verticality. This one just does a great job of that, whereas other ones, they'll have redstone dangling down here or redstone dangling up here, and it makes it very difficult to actually work with. Also, there's no hoppers actually exposed. There's There are some designs that I've seen before where there are hoppers just sitting out in the open, and that just does not look very good. So I have made a dropper design instead to look a lot nicer. So now you may be wondering, Bluebird Gamer, does this work, and how do you build it if it does? Now I'm going to show you. These are going to be the ingredients that you need for this build. Now you're going to need these These up here don't have to be stone or stone brick, but they do have to be 17 solid bricks, three stairs of some kind, and not all of these have to be slabs. I will indicate when it guaranteed has to be a slab. Now I would recommend just using slabs because it's cheaper and I haven't tested it with full blown blocks in every location. So there could be a particular instance where the redstone doesn't work. So I would recommend using the slabs here. So you'll need 17 building blocks, three stairs, 10 slabs, and two chests for storing all of your buckets, of course. And then for the redstone resources, we're gonna need a dropper, a dispenser, seven hoppers, six redstone dust, two redstone repeaters, two redstone comparators, a redstone torch, and very importantly, a target block. Now, for those of you who don't know how to make it, it's a hay bale with four redstone. Really cheap, but does a great job for what we need to do. And last, to make sure it actually works, you need two water buckets to actually set up the water source inside the machine. Now let's grab all this, and let's get to work. So the first step is going to be to build this front wall here that all the redstone will be attached to and running into. So to do that, you just make a row of four like this. You can have the chest back here like so, so it's facing in like this way. You set up another row of four. You do, a ba you do an upside down stair here to make sure that the chest still opens but still allowing for a smooth surface. And you can put the stair like this if you want a little bit of depth to it. As long, And honestly, this could be any block here. As long as it is a full block, or as long as it's some block there, because the water will be going in front of it and we can't have the water flowing out the front of the machine. That just looks really bad. And then we'll have another row of four up top and the dropper facing inward like this. Now the next step is we're actually going to lay out the redstone, and, or not just the redstone, I should say, the base schematic for the bottom layer. So, you put a slab here, this has to be a full block, and now we run some redstone back like this. We do need to set up some wiring as well, so put a hopper here, before, you get, before it takes too long, go ahead and set this up, dispenser, and hoppers. This is very important. This is where the actual water filling will take place. So once you have that in, it's much easier to see where the rest of the circuitry will go. So we'll put some slabs over here. Uh, we don't need that one, so remove that. These both need to be full blocks right here. And for the stairs, we're actually going to put... We have two left. We're going to put one like this. It's very important that it faces this way 
because if it's facing this way, for example, the water will flow out and into our redstone. So it has to be facing the way you see here. This stair, also very important, has to be... Okay, this is actually going to be kind of difficult. Let's do it up here. It has to be an upside-down stair with the little nook here facing in like so. Now, this is important because we don't want the water flowing out the side here. We don't want the water flowing in and hitting our redstone. But we also need... The water will still flow out this cranny, so make sure there's a slab here to prevent that. Before we get too far in, I am going to put in our water because the more redstone we add in, the more difficult it's going to be. You're going to put one water bucket in this little cranny right here. As you see, the water's not flowing out because the slab is blocking it. And this is where you put the other water source, right in there. Now that will create an infinite water source. Let me pull out an empty bucket just to show you it does work. I don't know why I have caps lock on. You can just spam this bucket as much as you want. And as you can see, it is just, it is an infinite water source. It works. Now we can actually start laying in some redstone here. So let's go ahead and grab all that out. We're going to need the following redstone for this layer. You're going to put a comparator here, just regular. A repeater for pulling out the for pulling out the uh, current from this block. We're going to have redstone dust running all the way along here. A repeater, very important. This needs to be set to two ticks, as you see here. Uh, this is it regularly. You click it once, that is two ticks. It's very important you do that. If this is on one tick, the system will actually break and you will have empty buckets in your end result. And you put a redstone torch down here to lock this hopper. Now let me explain, oh, and a, a target block here to direct the current over towards this dispenser. Now let me explain to you how this works. A block will come into this dispenser through the hoppers. The dispenser will have therefore the block in it or the item in it. The comparator will be able to detect that there's an item in there. It'll send the current through here. This uh, redstone here will direct into this dispenser which will activate it so it, the bucket will turn into a bucket of water and meanwhile the hopper is all locked this entire time because we have this redstone torch here two ticks later from this current the, hop the dispenser has had time to make this into a bucket of water so the current will come over here unlock the torch very quickly allowing the item to move through without letting any others in and that will give you your bucket of water so the main system actually works already from what you see right here. What we have to do now is we have to make sure the items don't flow in too quickly. And that's going to be the remaining resources that we have. So that's going to be your comparator here, hoppers, and then the 17th building block I chose is actually just the item that will go into our hopper clock. It doesn't have to be a building block specifically. I just chose it because it's really cheap and it's not like you want to put diamonds in for your block of choice for your hopper clock. So you put this all here. Very important is to make sure that the hop these hoppers are all running into each other. You just place one to start, and then you can just shift click on all the other hoppers, and they will flow into each other. You need to break this one again and have it feeding into this hopper. Now this is a closed loop. The item will always stay in here. Let's go ahead and put that in. And because of this comparator we have here, you can see every time the item gets to this spot, it sends a current into this block, which will actually activate our dropper. Now what you see here, as you can tell, they match up. This is our entire system. It's done. So let me quick show you how it works. And let me show you it does work. I guess would be a better way of putting it. Let, wait, I'm going to take an entire stack of buckets. Now the reason we built this hopper clock, and I'm going to show you how it works while I am testing it. The reason we built these hopper clocks is because normally, let's say this dropper was constantly activating, or let's say you had a hopper here, and they were all feeding in, you know, one after the other. The system actually can't keep up with that. Because of this hopper clock activating, this slows down the item feed through here long enough that this system can make a bucket into a bucket of water, empty it out, or I, say, I should say empty the inventory into the chest below, and then it can feed in the next item. If you just had hoppers like this, then you would have a problem to where, that one, it doesn't look good. I mean, if I do this, that just looks terrible. But if I had a hopper like that, they would all feed in at, you know, one, 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 about that speed, and the system just can't keep up with that. So that is why I've decided to go with a dropper design, and obviously you can't use a dispenser because it would just spit the bucket out. You have to use a dropper so it spits into the hopper specifically. So now, I hope all that made sense, how the redstone actually works behind this thing. And I will say, this specifically had to be a slab right here. 
This, I think, is the only one, as far as I'm aware, where that specifically had to be a slab was this one. Because we need to be able to block this water from flowing out. But if you make this a full block, the redstone actually doesn't work with this torch. So you want this to be a slab so the redstone can still technically turn the torch off and on, but still keeping the water out. Now that I've done all of that rambling and explaining how it works, let me show you it works. As you can see, every four, every four, or every hopper cycle, a bucket is taken out. The redstone is activating, as you can see, every time a bucket enters. The system detects it, makes it into a bucket of water. This hopper unlocks temporarily to allow the item out. And all of this is working fine and dandy. But thank you guys for watching. This is my auto bucket filler tutorial. I, I spent a little bit of time on this, and I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found it helpful, for filling all your buckets, because who doesn't have stacks of buckets just sitting around? Uh, go ahead and leave a like. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. But anyway, guys, oh, hang on. I have to, I have to do a proper intro, a proper outro. But if you want to see more of me being an absolute idiot, just like now, with my dragon head, come on, check me out on Twitch, and I'll be, I make more YouTube videos, so hang around here. But until next time, guys, this is Bluebird Gamer signing off. God bless America.